so many indie games to choose from, so many ways to irritate you, Jared. The video game industry thrives on needs indie games in their more inventive catalog in between its triple A titles, whereas a single person can develop an entire smaller scale game. It almost makes a machine wonder how the living race coped back in the 90s before such a thing was doable. Actually, that's not quite true, Mecca. I will destroy you if you disagree with me, orphan scum. No, seriously, back in the 90s, indie game creation still existed. Sure, there wasn't an Xbox Live Arcade Indie DB or Steam to showcase them on, but there was another way. Sony released the Black PlayStation back in 1997, for the ordinary folks such as you and I, Mecca. Uh, um, well, okay, for ordinary people to develop a simple game in their home. The development kit, consisting of a region free console, software, and two controllers, was titled The Net Eurozy, Japanese for Let's Do It Together. What became of such games? Well, the official PlayStation magazine in the UK always came with a demo disc each month. They'd often put Net Eurozy games on said discs for all to play. As an avid subscriber of the magazine, back when I was a normal human, and before this werewolf and curse was bestowed upon me, um, I would often look forward to which Net Eurozy games would be featured each month on the disc. I've since discarded many of the demo discs and magazines, but there's two discs in particular I kept, both of which have a large compilation of Net Eurozy games on. I'm speaking of demo discs 92 and 108 both towards the end of the magazine's lifespan. Oh boy, now I can make you go insane with frustration with each and every Net Euro Z game available on those discs. Quite. So, join me in this three-part special as we look through the insane world of Net Euro Z. I'm Jared. And I am Mecca. And we are the Indie Mechanics Gaming Reviews. So, this was the loading screen that came up on the demo discs uh, for the compilation for Net Eurozy. Now, as you'll see, there'll be a brick wall background in a moment. Yep. Uh, and this being demo disc 92, that was, that was showing you the, the interface here for. Uh, and this is just showing you some of the games in alphabetical order. Hmm. And of course, we'll be going through all of these and then some. But, um, yeah. So the first one is a dog tail. Um, a dog's tail was actually not on one of the two demo discs I had originally. Um, it was on demo disc. Oh god, uh, eleven I think. Or it was on one uh, that came much earlier. Now this is a platform, a two D platform that's actually a lot harder to control than you initially think. Uh, visually, it's it's all right actually for a two D game. Um, Soundtrack's catchy. There are no other sound effects though. It's very noticeable. The problem is the jumps in this game are very floaty. So you you sort of you you jump forward and you end up jumping very far forward and you can't change your angle in midair or anything. It's so it's a pretty <laughs> determined jump. And that jump there as well is, is sometimes there seems to be an issue of trying to land on that platform. Sometimes you get on top of it. Sometimes you actually go through it. It's actually a surprisingly difficult game, um, but quite enjoyable for what it is. Uh, so Dogtail was one of it was like first of many Net Euros games that official reviews the, the magazine presented. Now up next we have Adventure Game uh, of course I'm going in alphabetical order here, so Adventure Game's the next one um, starting on the it was on both demo discs I have, ninety two and hundred and eight. It's actually immensely enjoyable. You've played all those um well those JRPGs I think it's the best way to, to really Compare it to, yeah. It's got MIDI versions of a lot of classical tunes as well, um, which you'll see is a common theme in a lot of Net Eurozy, Net Eurozy games. So, this is you, you <laughs> playing a sword at a, a, a bat thing. Well, apparently it's a bird rather than a bat. I always thought they're bat for ages, but nope, they're birds. And yeah, it's actually quite impressive. There's this simple 3D world. You're very, um, almost Rayman-esque with your legs, and <laughs> that they don't exist. And, as you'll find with the dialogue, the dialogue in this game is amazing. Watch ya! Cool couple of darling apples and pears! Ah, uh, you think the innocence of... Yeah, like, so, basically, it's almost like a parody of 
RPGs in a, in a hilarious way almost. So um, yeah, it's it's quite it's quite funny, and and you'll see this uh, village come up as well. It's just full of insane NPCs now. Yeah, as far as computer care goes, I'm popular. Speak to him again. Everyone who knows me in the village, say hello. 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 And a lot of the NPCs are batch source insane. They really are. Yeah. Uh, this, but this is the kind of game I would have made. Because <laughs> I, I quite like making NPCs in games just absolutely ridiculous. And only having some of them say something important or of worth. But that's just sort of how I operate. Um, yeah, so it makes fun of it. It makes fun of the town people not being able to walk. Um, the game is full of this. It's, it's quite inventive for what it is. Um, and this, is, this used to actually be one of my favourites. Now, with uh, most Nate Rosy games, of course, at the, at the start when you load them up as well, they will also tell you who created it and how many weeks they created it in. Um, sometimes they'll give a year when it was released. Um, but, yeah, Adventure Game is just a lot of fun. It's... I don't think I've ever completed it. Mostly because you get to too many birds later on and just kind of get swamped. But it's enjoyable for what it is. I kind of... I wish there was a longer game like this, because I would be quite happy to play a full game like this. Um, but uh, maybe that's just me. Oh yes, and you got that annoying beggar that comes to you. Any <laughs> that sort of thing happens in more um, traditional RPGs. I say, I do say traditional. I, I do mean sort of J RPGs when I say that. Um, which I personally prefer. I quite like Western RPGs because the whole point of those given choice in conversations and your character class, etc., etc. But there's something about JRPGs that I, I quite enjoy. But um, I think this was made by a British guy. But there we go. So basically, your aim in this uh, village is, is pretty much to talk to a couple of NPCs, find out um, you know that everyone's been plagued by these birds. So you have to rid the birds um, from the area um, and I think one of the NPCs you need to talk to them I think it's actually the king hiding out if I remember rightly <laughs> yeah I thought you were an orphan um, but you need to get him basically to, to get the, the ferryman to make you use his raft to cross the river good stuff now, the reason I'm showing extended gameplay for uh, Adventure Game is because there's actually, as I say, there's quite a lot to see with this one. Um, some games, you kind of get the gist of it within like a minute. Adventure Game is, is something that's a bit, it's got a little more depth to it, so this is why I'm showing you so much gameplay for this particular one. Um, and so th those are the birds there. You just gotta get through, if I recall, you have to get through the um, Misty Forest uh, into a cave and, and uh, get rid of the birds in that area and find an NPC to sort of complete the quest, I suppose. So there's a ferryman. Got a message from some bloke. Yeah, it's got to be a British game. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. The raft begins to move as if by magic. I love, I love it. <laughs> it pokes fun at sort of things that would happen in these older games. You vow never to get on such a rubbish raft again in your life, but at least you're over the river now. <laughs> it's true. So here we are, Bird Central. <laughs> With more well-known music in MIDI form. So anyway, next game is Arena. Which is... Quite literally, you're in a mech and you're shooting things. Um, 
in this arena. <laughs> now, you may notice there's no background music um, for this one. A lot of NetEurosi games had no background music in which you can insert a CD to put your own music there, which is pretty cool in itself. Um, you originally had to open the disc tray, put a CD in and, and such, because it would load everything in one go, so it wouldn't be... You wouldn't have to keep the disc in to load it, but... Um, of course, what it meant is uh, you had to kind of reset the, the demo disc after playing it, otherwise you wouldn't be able to... You'd have to stay on this game, basically. Uh, most of most Nate Rosie games had start and select. You go back to the menu and you can continue with another demo. Some didn't. This game, to be honest with you, it was okay. It was kind of fun for what it was. It was kind of like a 3D version of... Um, almost like loaded or reloaded in a mech. <laughs> if that makes any sense. And you've got your, your health at the top and you do some collectibles. But there's not a massive amount to it. So you kind of... You get bored after about... 10 minutes. But uh, a lot of these Net Euros games were like they're sort of short, you couldn't play it for longer. Uh, but they, because there were so many of them on the discs, they will be a lot of fun. So you can use a smart bomb and, and just shoot things uh, and pretty much keep going until you end the level or you die. And there's, I think there's coolants for your, your weapon there because you have to keep uh, checking weapons or your gun. And uh, yeah, that was, that was Arena. Kind of fun. And now! We're on to the bees. Made 1998. You are watching Blitter Boy. Blitter Boy was actually pretty good. Um, we it was, it was all 2D, but it was actually pretty good. Um, I I quite remember spending a lot of time on this one. I'm not a very big fan of arcade games. It's a shame because a lot of these will end up being very arcadey, but um, Blitzer Boy really broke the mold for me. Um, it was just a little bit different. So the effects as well—it's like it <laughs> focused on the effects, like Crash Warped did. So um, yeah, your aim was basically to get rid of these ghost enemies and uh, collect the babies. Now, um, if the, the babies hit an enemy, they would start crying. You'd have to go to the baby to stop them crying, and then you'd have to touch them again in order for them to, to follow you. Now, the, the bigger the chain of babies you have following you, um, when you go to the teleporter at the end of the level, the more points you would get. Uh, and you could also get different upgrades for your weapon and such as well. As you can see, the points really rack up there, but uh, I, I missed the baby, which I didn't realise. Uh, and you can change your gun to different things, like you can have a rainbow gun, it shoots out rainbows, a sort of bounce um, over enemies and particular things, so there, there's that and lots of other mods and things as well. Also, you just get bonus when you can get all the babies, enemies turn into fruit, you get more points. It was actually a well designed game, um, it's definitely worth a play, Little Boy. Um, I think it had a subtitle actually, it was like Monster More Madness, or some, or something like that. But Blitter Boy was what we all remember it as, um, standard title. And of course you would... <laughs> it's a crazy effect between the screens. It gives it a bit of uh, a touch of class actually, it's pretty good. Uh, of course the levels get more difficult. And it was a load of fun. Definitely worth playing. Yeah, failed that one like straight away because the baby was crying. I think that one's on also both the demo discs 92 and 108, but damn, is it worth it? <laughs> Next, we've got Blocks. Isn't that an originally titled game? It <laughs> so basically, another one where you can put the CD in and, and have a tune in the background, but. It's Tetris on its side, with a few quirks, like you get a line, um, if you match up a line that had a particular block in it where, you know, an arrow's pointing a different way, the gravity would, would essentially change. You'd have to press right to go left and down to go up and such. I'll be honest, this game was pretty naff. Um, like, I see what it's trying to do, it's trying to work on the Tetris formula. Overall, I don't think it really engages you enough to keep you playing. Which is a shame, but 
for the diversion it is I mean it's okay for about five minutes um there's nothing more to it I mean what you're seeing is what you get here it but hey there are a couple of those in the net Eurozy collections but I think that was just the thing to do for people to do puzzle and arcadey type games but uh, let's say adventure game was a clear standout exception from that as is another game which um, will come in part three. Next one is Bouncer. This is Bouncer 2. This one's simple, but it's a lot of fun, actually. This one's uh, pretty good, again. Uh, one that you can get quite addicted to. Play the game! <laughs> like there's a, an about Bouncer 2 menu selection there. But as you can see, this is pretty much, um, you have two people, you bounce on a set of uh, seesaw scales, almost, you can change your uh, character between the two as well. And the aim was basically just to, like, break out, um, bounce your enemy, bounce your enemy, bounce your companion higher and higher, uh, to just break all the blocks and get all the uh, crystals, I suppose. Um, as I say, it's simple, but this one's actually pretty enjoyable. It's it's a nice... I think it's actually a lot more fun. Um, it's a much better novelty than the original Breakout. So it improves on it, which is great. So you can really get into this, and it'll get a lot more difficult um, as you go through as well. So yeah, uh, kudos on this one, I think. Next we have... Ah. Yeah. The game that everyone kind of nicknamed tunnel but was actually called in between the eyes or something like that um, on <sighs> yeah I WS92 I think this one was on this one was really quite psychedelic um, I don't I don't think much to this one I'll be honest with you it's basically a racing game um, you can play it two player which is always nice and uh, you had quite a few net Eurozy games like that um, you can choose your map, which was essentially a different psychedelic tunnel. You could choose your ship, which is differently a different ship, different shape, with another psychedelic pattern on it. And you'd um, race against other racers. But I'll be honest, this game was tough as nails. Because in order to actually play this game well, you needed to know the layout of the tunnel, as you'll see here. Look. It was a nightmare to play. It really plays havoc with your eyes. The controls are super sensitive. And you, you're constantly having to weave in and out of this tunnel that basically stops you dead in your tracks if you touch one of the walls. So winning a race was actually really quite difficult. Um, and you'd have like three laps to do this on as well. It, this is a game definitely to play with friends, I think. This was definitely a multiplayer game. Playing this on your own was, was almost not worth it. <laughs> Um, so I'd definitely give it a nay for playing on your own, but playing with your friends, this could be a hoot. Just... Yeah, it hurts my eyes watching this now. Mecca would have a field day, but luckily I turned him off for this. I don't want him... I don't want him talking in these segments. But, um... Although he will play with me on a couple of these. I'm sure. But... Yeah, just look at this. Racing game... Ugh. There's a couple of races. Um, but there we go. <laughs> now was the race. Next we have C for clone. It's like an alphabet for kids. C clone. Except I don't think kids would really, young kids would really want to play this game. Um, clone. I mean, <laughs> crone. If you got it the wrong way around there. Clone was. A good attempt, actually, at a, a sort of Doom or Quake, almost like remake called Castle Wolfenstein. You know that sort of thing. You can hear a heartbeat going. You, it, you basically had to find your way through the space and shoot what appeared to be alien things that would shoot back at you. Which those things, there, they're, which are quite terrifying, to be honest with you. Look at that. They pop out of nowhere, they make your heart beat, there's no other background sound, and they make horrific noises and try and kill you. They look freaky as hell. Um, so, a lot of people, from what I I remember, <laughs> said this game actually creeped them out when they were younger. For such a simple thing, it, it's still... Look at that, that's kind of creepy. It still has its effect. 
Again, I could never really find my way out of this maze. <laughs> I could never do much in it. I get to a certain point and just get stuck. But um, it's actually quite a, it's quite a, an inventive clone. It was it's pretty good um, for what it was worth. Um, there were no other Net Eurotic games like this either. So yeah, it was, it was pretty solid. Ah, go away. Now we've got the last game of part one, the incredible Cone Man. Believe me, he is really not incredible in the least. Not the slightest bit. He's, he's he got this repetitive tune in the background, which grates on you. Never changes, by the way, per every level you do. You're just collecting cones. You can't... You know, it's, it's a Pac-Man clone without the decency of getting fruit to eat the ghosts for fun. It's actually pretty lame. <laughs> you get sick of it after one level, I'll be honest. It is boring. You get stars to pass you through the ghosts, but not eat them or, or beat them or anything. Just pass through them and make you slightly faster. This level, this this game actually drives you mad. It's not fun at all. So thank you for watching uh, Mechanics Gaming in NetUrosi Part 1. We've got two more videos to come. Please subscribe to the cast of us. We'll love you in videos as much as you love us with mouth. Or something like that. Sony Computer Entertainment presents a Dragon Shadow Industries production, Decaying Orbit! Decaying Orbit is a game made from Net Eurosi. Um so welcome to our Net Eurosi part two special of Mechanics Gaming Reviews as we look at some of the PlayStation 1 indie games back from the official PlayStation UK magazine disc. Uh Mecha is currently switched off because I don't want him interrupting me on this. And I'm showcasing various Net Eurosi games for you. Now we're on to D Decaying Orbit in a Desperate move, your fleet is ordered deep into spy space, since they are the largest suppliers. Um, giving you a bit of a, a little bit of a story to this indie game. So of course, um, these most of these indie games, uh, Net Eurosi games, come from demo discs 92 and 108 of the official PlayStation Magazine UK's demo discs. Um, if you wish to seek those out, you can, there's plenty on them, and there are also other demo discs that usually have uh, the odd Net Eurosi game here and there. Um, there's a couple I'm not showcasing today, such as Caterpillar um, being one that I, I do remember, and Sphere, uh, which, you know, I thought I did have the demo disc for, but it's since gone missing, so I, I only have three left. So, here we are, Decaying Orbit, which is, yeah, as you can see, you're a ship. Um, you basically shoot yourself off a planet, and your aim is to get to the next planet using the gravitational pull of the other planets. Navigation system failure. Yep. And you have to land safely on that planet. Some levels include beacons in which you have to hit. Some involve avoiding obstacles. But yeah, you, it's it's quite a fun game actually. You use so basically you they get harder and harder. And you're just using the planet's uh, gravitational pull to navigate yourself to the other planet. You do have a sort of limited amount of fuel, so every thrust counts. Now, if you go off screen, navigation system failure. It resets you. You basically die. You do have a timer to do this. There's one fourteen. 13, 112 at the top there. Um, and yeah, it's it's nice, it's simple, good stuff. Now, oh, that's a beacon there, if you're wondering. I, I don't quite hit it, but there we go. Oh no, don't, don't, oh, don't operate now. This game looks pretty pathetic. Oh, hi Mecha. Don't you look grand. I look grand. As in old. Now, we're going to play a game called Down, with this ridiculously catchy theme. 
yeah, baby. You can play this one or two player. Play two player, and I will crush you, making you go down until you die. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, your aim in this game. Do act not ignore me. I will take over. Well, take over then, you sausage. That's the worst thing I could come up with right now. The aim of this game is to continuously travel downwards, avoiding the top spikes from the top of the screen. You'll get hurt with every bit of spike you touch, as represented in the top left corner. For each platform you land on, you regain a hit point. The aim of the game is to go as far down as possible. It is much better played with different players, as you will continue to go down and the person who remains alive last wins. Yep. As such, there's not really much to the one player experience. You just keep going. But hey, is that midi tune really jazzy? The problem is, this game is fun for about a minute and then dies. It's not got a lasting appeal. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. You do get various power-ups that can speed you up or make you descend slower. But overall, it's quite a shallow game. But hey, it's fun if you have friends. If not, kind of not worth playing, I'll be honest. But, uh... Yeah, you just keep going! There is also a cheat menu in this game where you can change the parameters so that you can moonwalk, go faster, or turn the screen faster. Here are the various options. You can also change the music of the game, which we're not going to do because I do find this tune quite funky! Yeah. So as you see here, the screen is sped up and you are moonwalking. You can change the difficulty in that way. Now we have Gravitation. Not the manga, the game. Gravitation. Not to be confused with Decaying Orbit. This game is... Well, it's not really that great, but... Still. No, no, I tell a lie. This game's another one on one player is... It's pretty naff on one player, but on two player this game comes alive. I'm sorry, I actually haven't got any two player footage today. Um, incidentally, the second player um, <clears throat> has been turned offline again. Hey, Mecca. But as you can see, you are fighting against gravity, and on one player mode, you basically go through various numbered checkpoints and in the least amount of time possible. If you touch a wall, you explode. Yeah. Sounds simple, but as I say, one player, dull. Two player, it's amazing. You play as a, uh, you both play as different ships, and your aim is to shoot each other dead. Because you can shoot, um, and it's damn fun. It really is on two player. You're constantly battling it out on different maps, this isn't the only map. On a uh, split screen, as it is on two player. You can change, you can get various power ups that will change the uh, direction of your bullets so you can shoot downwards behind you as well as in front of you upwards. Rapid shot, all sorts of different things. But I say one player, as you can see, it's tough as nails. You just gotta go through the number checkpoints. Constantly hammering the X button to accelerate. And then curse when you screw it up. This game oh yeah this game this was was it f zero racing hover was it hover racing or hover car racing there are two different net Eurosy games one called hover racing one called hover car racing um unfortunately it's not exactly a massive title on this one but yes, this is also a nice, uh, dull as heck on one player, but fun on two player. A lot of these Net Eurosy games um, do have a, a second player appeal. Now, it, you basically play as these top down vehicles. Yep. Get the hang of the really quite difficult controls at the start, but you get the hang of it pretty quick, I'll be honest. Try not to get stuck there, because the edge of the track slows you down. And you can race on this track. Um, I think there's like four or five laps on this particular one. And you just race against the other cards. Um, it's really hard to beat the other cards. So it's actually a lot more fun just to go on a multiplayer splooge and 
Mm, that sounded kind of wrong, actually. Go out and watch you play a splooge and beat your friends. It's quite fun for that way. Um, actually, um, when I was a human, uh, I was belonged to a forum which made a fan type game like this based on forum members and different vehicles and it was top down like this so I've, I've actually played this sort of game before weirdly enough um, but uh, it's this game's just as good really just get it just takes a while to get used to the controls because uh, left is always left and right's always right on the direction your vehicle's facing so even when you're traveling right on the screen you press right to turn right and go down know what I mean there. But uh, yeah, it's fun. It's got all sorts of different tracks, but I'll be honest, this game, the track design is pretty naff. They're all really similar. There's no different textures or anything. It's all that's pretty much the same texture, just on a slightly different layout of the track. So, uh, it doesn't have a lasting appeal for that reason, but yeah, it's good for what it is, I suppose. There's also this weird... Tetris-esque Dr. Mario... No, nothing like Dr. Mario. Tetris-esque mini-game that you can play whilst you're waiting for your friends to choose their vehicle and change the colours of the vehicle and whatever. Don't know why. Fun diversion for what it is. But I'm partially colourblind, so I can't tell the difference between about three of those colours. Next we have Mahjong. Now, the thing about this game... Um, is that it's it's what it says on the tin. You, <laughs> it's measure. So you match two tiles up um, that aren't next to another tile. So one at the edge that's next to only one tile only, and you match it with another tile that's like that until the whole board's gone. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't know why you'd really want to play this on the PlayStation, but hey, there it is, ready if you ever wanted to. Uh, there is a timer. Tells you how many tiles you got left. You can up the difficulty. Tells you how many moves you've done. Yeah, it's riveting. Absolutely sourcing riveting. If I could rivet this, it would be a construction site. So next we've got Haunted Maze. Haunted Maze. Despite its cheesy, midi, well-known tunes that I'm sure you'll recognise. It's actually pretty fun. No, I'm serious. The aim of this game is basically to go around a maze and collect these various items. Stars, hearts, whatever. Random collectibles that don't make sense. Once you've collected all the items, avoiding these polygon zombies, of all things, the uh, exit of the maze opens up and you can escape and go to the next level which is harder, makes the zombies faster, etc, etc. Actually pretty fun. Surprisingly. For, for such a simple concept. Yeah, this is definitely worth playing. Um, the tunes get old fast though, they do sort of recycle the same four odd tunes. But hey, by the time it recycles the third time you're probably gonna <laughs> not pass anyway because <laughs> the game gets really fast and hard but yeah this is pretty enjoyable and um, definitely worth a play I like uh, also like how when you die um, on this you just get a, a sign that says ouch as if that's the most minor thing that could ever happen to you so anyway here we are at a game called git git yeah which is generally a British slang for an offensive thing. I'm not sure what it means. People just, you get, you know, it's an offensive thing like that. Um, the subtitle for this game is a game involving triangles. And it sure is. And it's annoying. It's actually not that fun to play in any bit of the slightest, to be honest with you. You match colours of the triangles up and they break rows and then you can choose where to put the rows and then the winner is the player who survives longest. It keeps going on forever by the way. There's no eternal winner as it were. You just keep going. And boy is it dull. You can have your own background tune but um, I'll be honest if I was to say yay or nay to playing this game I would say nay. Yeah. 
and it's imps. And Mecca's back up and running. Imps is such an insult to my processor. It is a simplistic copy of what you would call Space Invaders. You sit at the bottom of the screen and shoot little... Things, little human squishy filth. I wouldn't say the human, they're more alien. Shut up, you wolf and scum. You survive various ways shooting the particular human scum. Getting points to no particular music in the background. You keep going through various waves until you die or get bored. Yep, and it's very easy to get bored of this game. In fact, I'll be honest, there are a couple of Net Euro Z Space Invader esque games, and all of them, every single one of them, are dull as hell. They really are, because they're all just copying the Space Invader thing, which wasn't a fun game to begin with. It's dull. It's dull. So, yeah, this is definitely one to avoid. Without a doubt. I mean, you would play this for like a minute and then... I don't know. Maybe two if you're feeling good. <laughs> dun, dun. Love to hear the Chernobog theme from Fantasia, but um, in MIDI form. So this is Opera of Destruction, which you can play one or two players. I was particularly, I remember being very intrigued by this game, being like, oh, was it, is it going to be actually an opera? Oh, is it going to be something involving lots of mass destruction? Do you know what it is? It's kind of boring, actually. You, you involve... involve... No, don't. Don't take my thunder, Mecha. I, I am going, going to destroy, destroy you and take over... No, no, Mecha! Okay. Turn him off again. So, you are basically a turret and ship, and you shoot down the opposition city. And try and take over it on two player. In one player mode, you protect your city from aliens. It's that dull. So next we have Pandora's Box, which isn't as well exciting as the title shows, but as <laughs> even though the title is boring as heck, you it's one of those games where you push boxes onto particular areas to complete the level. And the level is complete once all those boxes on that area. Um, I'll be honest, this game kind of glitches a lot. So a lot of time when you complete a level, you don't seem to progress further. You kind of get stuck. It's not very fun. It's another one to yeah. avoid, really. I mean, yeah, sure. First person perspective. Nice visuals for the time, I suppose. But really, like, I can think of so much more exciting games to play with boxes. Really? Yeah. Yay! Next we have Pushy 2B. Which is exactly the same game as Pandora's Box, but actually with a lot more visual style to it. It's a lot better actually in general. You push boxes onto particular X's, the goal is to get all the boxes on the areas to progress. You know, levels get harder. Um, this particular batch of levels is called Susan. As if Susan was a particularly simple lady who would push boxes into places that weren't that difficult. Other levels include various other names. And you know, it gets harder as you get through, etc. There's a timer, you get more points. The quicker you do it, I don't know. So, anyway, here's David's levels. Is it one to play? Well, it's fun for a little while. It's certainly a lot better than Pandora's box. But I'll be honest, you'll want to play Psycon more. The controls are pretty simple with this one, um, as you can see there. You can also play this on two-player as well. And yeah, this one's pretty fun. As you can see, you're basically a uh, top-down perspective. You're this guy who's shooting all the enemies in this level. Uh, until you get to the exit, really. You've just got to find the exit. Uh, shooting as many people as you want is just a secondary goal. But yeah, it's got a good soundtrack, it repeats. Good visual style to it. It's actually pretty fun. Psychon is a good game. Um, definitely worth one picking up. So, um, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of like a combination of, of Gauntlet and uh, Loaded or Reloaded. I don't know if you've ever played those games in the uh, past. But yeah. Good fun, really. Do 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 do
Yeah. I wish some of these games weren't just uh, restricted to the PlayStation. Uh, if you could play them on the uh, handheld or something. That'd be great. Well, I've learned a lot of these games have recently been made into PC compilation. But maybe not Robot Run. Uh, Robot Run is is deceptively happy for what it is. It's a very dull game. You're that robot there, and you press circle to shoot right, X to shoot down, square to shoot left, triangle to shoot up, and that's pretty much it. You get power-ups that can increase your bullets, uh, rate of fire, spread, all sorts, just eliminate all the other basic robots on the screen. It's a duller version of Asteroids, if I'll be honest. It's not addictive, it's not even that fun. No soundtrack to speak of unless you insert your own CD. It's it's dull. It's well worth giving it a skip. Uh, this is one that I think was on a demo disc 108, if I remember rightly. So, yeah. Rocks and gems. Final edition. This is one that generally came on on uh, lots of lots of uh, the Net Eurosy demo discs. I think it's on both. Um, demo disc 92 and 108, and it's it's rock hard. <laughs> but is it a gem? I'm I'm so bad. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, you, yeah, easy to die. You basically have to collect all the gems in a level, and avoid the rocks um, which can fall on you. You have a strict timer that you're competing against. So by the time you complete a level. Uh, which I have never actually done. You have become really good at this game. Uh, later levels, um, as I've I've seen, involve uh, things involving water and dynamite, and it gets a lot more in depth on the mechanics and what you can do. Um, it's it's hard, but kind of addictive in its own weird way. So it's definitely worth a play. Um, this game you may have seen advertised under the uh, Mahjong. Um, game that was showcased earlier. It was made by the same developer, um, and this, you know, Mahjong is, I know it's a fair representation of what it is, but this is definitely the one to play out of the two. Um, and yeah, it's worth giving. It's worth giving a shot. I think it's fondly remembered by quite a few people, but I mean, you can't even dawdle in this level. You can't even stop and think things through because of that timer. It's just so difficult. Oh no, don't, don't operate again. This game is simplistic and easy to me. I will be able to do it in no time flat. Then do it. Do it in four seconds, Mecca. Couldn't, could you? I died. I am a failure. Oh my goodness, what the heck is that? Keep it away from me. That, my friend, is Roller. You play as a sphere with eyes, because that's the normal thing to do. In what can only be described as a piece of sauce? No, no, Mecca. As a, a kind of bit of fun, actually, as a, mo a marble madness s game. It starts you off simple, though. You collect um, various crystals, and then you get to the exit. Yeah, simple as that. You uh, tilt the platform to roll the ball. Yeah. I think if the world was ever taken over by anything, it would be by that ball with eyes. I will be the one to take over the world. But you'll have to take on that ball with eyes. It kind of terrifies me. Keep it away. Calm down, Mecca. Well, that was the Net Eurosy Part 2 of our Mechanics Gaming Special of early indie games on the PlayStation era. Please love us, subscribe, and stay tuned for Part 3. Welcome to part 3 of Mechanics Gaming and its Net Eurosy specials. Uh, and starting with this game, today on Samsaric Asian Totes, I hope. Or oh, Assassin Sassy Seuss. Oh, game over. Oh well. No, this is uh, like a schmuck type sh shooter where you're a little craft who's going. Uh, is pretty much travelling up on the screen and you just shoot whatever comes your way and avoid all the bullets. Pretty simple. Um, pretty addictive actually. This is one of the better Net Eurosy games um, developed, but maybe you can hear in the background it uses a tune which I find it seems to have been pilfered 
from uh, another Nate Yorosi game, which we'll go into a bit later, because that's yet to come. So maybe they had to pick from a stock library, and but this one became known on that other particular game. But this game is actually really good. Um, it's a good schmuck sh uh, shooter. And you get different power-ups which changed your weapon, as you see it's a, the laser that fires upwards. So it's good. Now this one's Shroud. Which... Yeah, I, di I, remember, I didn't like this very much. Um, Shroud is, is, as you see, is a horizontal shooter. In which you just slide across the screen left to right and destroy the enemies. You have a smart bomb, as you can see there, and... And... You have about three lives to do things in. It's actually very kind of dull. It gets old very quickly. Um, I absolutely hate this kind of Net Eurozy game. Um, I don't like the vectorish Space Invaders esque looking ones that kind of use those graphics and, and play just as simply. I, I find those are the worst Net Eurozy games um, out of out of the actual complete ones are available. Um, from the official PlayStation Magazine UK magazines, which these came on. Now this one's Snowball Fight. This one's actually pretty fun. You play, um, basically it's a two-player penguin game. So Mecha! Just turn you on. Uh, uh, turning Mecha on. Mecha Systems Online! I seem to be a penguin. Indeed you are. Grab some snow, Mecha. We've got to throw snowballs at each other. I would rather shoot a laser of death at you! Or just throw a snowball. And listen to that catchy music. The music is kind of astronomical. No, Mecha. Actually, the music is pretty fun. It's kind of a simple loop, but it really sets the theme. This game is particularly cute. And all you need to do is basically gobble up some snow, uh, which you can see in the little sort of health bar at the top of the screen. Um, and you select a direction for a snowball. I have figured out the game, you scum. It is pretty simple. You are you, however, will not beat me in combat. We will see, Mecca. So yeah, this is actually a really fun game to play on two-player. Grab a grab a friend. Okay, uh, there may not be many maps, but throwing snowballs at each other is actually pretty fun. So yeah, this is a Net Eurosy game that's cute and cuddly, and maybe one to play with your your partner. I think. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's good fun. If you say so, I would rather try a different map. Well, you're not going to see a different map, Mecha. You're going to get beaten in combat, because I am player one to the left, and you are nothing but a penguin. You are also a penguin, Jared. Yep, yep, I am. But hey, I'm used to these Arctic conditions. Well, I would be saying that if I was actually a full wolf. But I'm not. I'm a wolf man, trapped in this house with you, Mecca. Ha ha ha! You lose scum! Okay, next we have Super Bub Contest, which is amazing. This is actually one of the awesome Net Eurozy games worth checking out. Um. Oh yeah, this one is on Demo Disc 108, uh, with a lot of the others. And yeah, as you can see, you, you throw basically two bubbles up on the screen uh, like super puzzle bubble or something it's something similar anyway and you throw it up and you get to change the color combo and you just have to match the colors up and you destroy the bubbles on your screen which then go on the opponent's side so your aim is basically to make your opponent lose um, and you get these spiral bubbles which take out that particular color which is, which is how you destroy the colors in the first place and your aim is to get loads of combos from it this is actually a really great game it's it's amazing fun to play with a friend uh, and it just gets more hectic the further through you get I'm not amazing at this game I know you are not you are a lion I am a ghost we will see who will win I am pretty sure the ghost will win no that's not my point Mecca the reason why I'm not so great at this game is because I'm actually partially colorblind yeah bet you didn't know that but I'm trying my best to see the differences between to me, which looks like a massive load of green, but there's a bit of yellow in there apparently, so I've been told. But yeah, so you, you, matching up the colours is, is a bit difficult for me, but I'm trying my best. And yeah, the tune's quite catchy and it escalates as well, and it's just amazing fun. <laughs> Do, 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 do
this tune is particularly pleasing to my audio receptors. I could easily listen to this for a few minutes at most, actually. Yeah, well, okay, music is repetitive, but at least it's funky. And hey, Mecca, I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna beat you good and proper for all those times you wailed on me. I have wailed on you a total of a bazillion times. You will never beat me. Well, we'll see. I am a lion. Lion. Rawr. A lion. You idiot. So, yeah, you can choose from a, a selection of crazy characters at the start, and you just keep going. Well, this is funky. What is going on? The visuals are destroying my visual receptors. Quiet Mecha. It only happens when you're escalating in the game and it's coming towards its end. As you can see, there's a lot of bubbles on the screen right now. Well, it will all be over soon. I know, you can even get those rainbow ones that take away all of the colour of one particular area. And you can get chains and all sorts as well. So yeah. Here we go. More chains. Oh, good. Uh, oh. See, I win again, human scum. I'm not quite human, I'm slightly wolfed. Anyway, Team Fatal, the guys that were you Fatal Fantasy 7, don't check it out. Um, brings you Terra Incognita, which is widely classified as one of the best NetEroti games. This game um, comes on Demo Disc 92, uh, and various others, but on this particular compilation it does. And yeah, it is good. It is good fun. It's as you can see. It's it's from a slightly top-down-ish sort of perspective. Uh, kind of uses the model. Um, I assume it's an edited model of Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII. It wouldn't surprise me. As I said, I did sort of start with Fatal Fantasy VII, and um, yeah, it's actually really good. Your aim is just to get basically to this sort of uh, treasure in this unknown island, collect it, and head back to the boat. It's simple, but you can do all sorts. You pick up crates, you do little puzzles, you uh, you progress in really cool ways. It's like a simple action RPG with puzzles. Think like uh, Zelda mixed with I don't know, with something else that that doesn't quite exist out there. It's it's pretty good, um, but you will have to endure the English, which I actually find is quite compelling. Um, <laughs> compelling is maybe more. It's actually quite endearing. There we go. The English is is actually it's quite <laughs> fun. It really uh, adds to this game in a sort of weird way. So yeah, you just go up here, get a heart vessel, so you can collect more hearts as you go through. And um, yeah, it's just good fun. You can say throw crates. Um, you can jump quite quite good. <laughs> What's what to say? You have a lot of control over it. You can even change the camera. A lot of Nate Rosie games aren't like this, but it's this utilizes the full 3D really quite well. Um, and as you can tell, this game ha has that same music as the Schmuck Shooter from earlier, and this is kind of where the music is most recognized from out of the games. Um, and it's a, it's a good soundtrack, I suppose. I relate it to this game. This is definitely one of the best ones. In fact, I, I would probably this uh, Super Bub contest, and I kind of find the adventure game kind of is pretty fun as well. But a lot of people don't like that. But yeah, they're, they're really up there, the Net Rosie games, and there's a lot of of them worth checking out. A lot that aren't. Of course, there are many that weren't released on the compilation discs as well, which is unfortunate. Um, but I'm sure you can find online variants. Uh, I've I'm sure you can. Some people would have ripped these and then searched around, located others that were never released on the discs. But I, I stuck with the PlayStation 1 disc. And these indie games are amazing. Really good. So this is the cream of the crop. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll let this play out with more footage than the others. Because there's just so much to sort of <laughs> see and enjoy, I suppose. You are simply a human who wanders around looking for hard vessels. There is not that much goodness to it, Jared. No, it's actually really compelling. It's actually very fun. You're just trying to progress further and figuring things out. I mean, 
on this particular section, you need to get a crate and take it back. Well, in fact, you saw it really. You get a crate, you move it to take it back, and this section here, there are multiple pathways, and this particular one this leads to more heart vessels, so you can actually do some of the later parts of the island. It's pretty good, and yeah, there are even there are even these slime things, which you can actually throw crates on top of. As so. <laughs> And, and use them as a platform, which I, I only just figured out in this, this quest. Um, so it's, it's pretty good. Good going, really. Yeah! Press square button to, to hit things and do stuff and jump. And you, you don't know what to say, do you? you? Oh, oh. I included a lot of footage, okay? I've said what I need to say. What more do you want? <laughs> so yeah, a lot of people um, probably have this this particular compilation disc. They probably got it, probably saw Terra Incognita and they was like, yes, we must have this. Um, but this is, yeah, Demo Disc 92. Strangely, it wasn't on 108, but um, Demo Disc 108 of the official PlayStation Magazine UK has the more of the later ones, as well as a couple of classics as well. But yeah, getting Demon Disc 92 is worth it for this game alone, in my opinion. Terra Incognita! It is full of water! You will jump around, find the ground, and progress! So, as you see, yeah. You have this crate here, which you pop there, and you, with that you can push this metal crate on top. You can keep pushing it to go on the switch so the platform appears. Good stuff. Clever stuff. And I realise I need the crate. To pick up. So it's, it's a lot of things like that, and it's great. It kind of introduces you it to you in really good moments. Now we have tanks, which is about tanks. Who would have thought it? Um, in this two-player fun fest of a game, you play as a tank that tanks things with a tank. So, it's, as you say, it's, as you can see, it's a simple top-down shooter where you basically cannon your opponent with a rotating tank and whoever wins is the first person to blow up the other tank. I'll be honest, um, it's a bit boring. It's like fun for a few minutes, but it's a bit boring. It's another one of those games where you can load a CD um, and have a music track running in the background. But, yeah. Die, Mecha! Die, you scum! Victory. And now, we have the awesome time slip. This one was on demo disc 108, and my goodness, is it so worth it. Um, so, we, it's, it's pretty much a simple 2D platformer, as you see on the side here. And your aim is to basically get a certain amount of coins that do a particular objective for every level. And you have a timer at the top of the screen. And when that timer reaches the full circle of the analog clock, you will uh, experience a time jump in which another version of you appears. All these actions that you're doing here will be recorded and then played back when that next minute goes. And then you'll be continuing off where you left off. You'll see. Whoa! Um, you can speed time up as I'm doing here. Look at those coins jump! Um, and it's an inventive idea, actually. I really recommend this game. It's pretty fun. And um, very hard as well. So, there's a past version of myself. Stand on the door um, to let myself through. Now there's going to be two versions of myself running around. And you can't run into your other version. Otherwise, you create a paradox and you have to start over. It's actually a really fun, inventive game. As I understand it, recently it was re-released on the Xbox Live Arcade? Something like this. A newer version of this. Which is incredible to think. Um, but it started as a Net Eurozy game. And, yeah. Definitely worth a shot. Definitely worth playing. Uh, it's just a new twist on the 2D side-scroller genre. Uh, the levels do get increasingly harder and harder, but it's a good challenge. So that was the first level. 
time slip and you get of course it's done by password system as well which is uh, pretty good so you don't have to start all the way from the start like pretty much every net Eurosy game out there um but then most of them aren't really as long and in-depth as this one to be honest with you so time slip worth a shot do it be a snail why are you a snail is it because snails are slow I don't understand and now we have Total Soccer. Now, funnily enough, if you're a British football fan, I say British football soccer if you're American, um, then you will be well aware uh, in the 90s you, you pretty much had the Pro Evolution Soccer, um, uh, FIFA, which is still about, still the pretty much number one sword sports game in the UK and you had a, quite you had quite a few of them um, and this is sort of like net Eurozy's answer to soccer games so here you have like a list of, of the teams you can play and they're all parodies of actual existing names of teams and you can select particular players that you want in your team and they all have different stats I don't know I never I never really played these sorts of games but I tell you what when playing this, I found it pretty darn in depth. Um, and as such, as if you didn't, haven't necessarily played a soccer football game in the past, this is actually quite enjoyable. I think the rules kind of sometimes make themselves up, though. I'm pretty serious about it. <laughs> sometimes I don't understand why fouls happen. And the rules of football are pretty simple, to be honest. But it's like like that there, right? <laughs> My character was booked for something I don't even know that happened. I could, I, I didn't even press the the uh, I didn't even press the the button. That's the word, the button, Jeff. Yeah. I didn't even press any of the buttons to attack the opponent. I don't even know what happened. These replays are quite annoying as well. But it's actually a surprisingly okay football game. And for an A.U. Rosie product, it's, it's pretty brilliant. So again, another one I highly recommend. Um, of course, you can play this two-player. One person plays as one team. The other person plays as the other team. You kick a ball around the field. Uh, use your striker to try and, if you can, get it into the goal. Uh, use defenders to defend the ball away from your own goal. Your goalkeeper. Um, kind of difficult to control because you're controlling a multitude of people on the field at once. So, so the game sort of decides which one's probably best for you to pick up on, and then you suddenly control a different person. But yeah, so like, why is he injured? What happened? I, I, I don't understand how these rules sometimes happen when you're not deliberately trying to attack the opposition. But whatever, it's definitely worth a kick about. So this is this is. I almost said net Eurosians. This is Eurosians, mm. which is the most fun game in the world. No, it's, it's a bunch of shots. It's a bunch of sauce. It's space invaders with annoying sounds. I hate the net Eurosi space invader clones. They suck. Sorry for the guys that created it, but like, use a bit more imagination. Let me see. Space Invaders. I don't want to play a different version of Space Invaders. It's a boring game. It lasts. The enjoyment lasts about five minutes at most. Net Euros again. The best ones are ones that don't last five minutes. <laughs> the ones that are really addictive and you can play again if they're not long in themselves, like Terra Incognita. Or Time Slip. So, this game is rubbish. Give it a miss. And as you can see, I think it's absolute that. Thank you, John. So, Mecca, what do you think? What a pile of garbage! Some are about as fun as drinking lumpy sauce from a straw, but some really have their merit. Super Bob Contest, Adventure Game, Blitter Boy and Terra Incognita are well worth checking out in particular, but stay clear of those Space Invader-esque clones. And hey, 
They all came from the late 90s and early noughties, in a time where this stuff was inaccessible for the most part, so thank you Official PlayStation Magazine UK for such an experience. I'm sure you'll all find copies of said demo discs on eBay or extrapolated for your own amusement elsewhere. It is time to bring it back to the here and now. Let us not dwell on the past. Okay, okay, you're right. Any requests world, and please subscribe to the Cast of Us, comment for suggestions, and read the articles put up on Curious Culture. Stop advertising! Okay, I'll start playing the trumpet instead. <laughs> <laughs>